Hello and welcome to this tutorial on transitioning from ECDA to Flux. If you've been designing your PCBs with ECDA but are looking for a more modern AI-powered platform, Flux might be the perfect tool for you. In this video, we'll walk you through everything you need to know to make the switch and get started with Flux. So let's dive in. Flux is a cutting-edge PCB design tool that operates directly in your browser, just like ECDA. So if you're familiar with ECDA, you'll feel right at home with Flux's interface and workflows. In addition to its ease of use, one of Flux's standard features is its AI Power Assistant, Copilot, which helps you design professional-grade PCBs faster and with fewer errors. Copilot assists by suggesting schematic connections, optimizing parse selection, and offering invaluable feedback as you design. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to manage libraries, how to do schematics, and layout using AI. Feel free to use the timestamps below to jump directly to the section you're interested in. The major difference between ECDA and Flux is how parts and libraries are handled. In ECDA, you have multiple libraries, including a common library, user-generated parts, and third-party vendor libraries. Managing and switching between these libraries can become quite complex. In Flux, everything is unified. All parts are housed in a single community curated library, making it easier to search and access components. Whether you're using parts from the community or once you create it yourself, they're all in one place. For JLC PCB users, most supported parts can be found by typing JLC PCB plus the part number. In this case, we can use the DF40C as an example. Once you find the right part, simply click on it and drag it into your design. If you can't find the part you need, check out the link in the description for tutorials on how to add parts to the library. Flux also provides light pricing and availability. As you design your schematic, you can get real-time part pricing and availability updates, which help you keep your project on budget and on time. You can also use Copilot to help you choose the right parts and find alternatives. To engage with Copilot, you can either use the messages interface or the chat menu here on the right. To use Copilot, simply type add Copilot, choose the expert, and type in your question. The difference between the three experts is a bit subtle. The librarian has access to all the datasheets of all the parts in your design, and it uses those datasheets to answer very specific questions about those specific parts. The generalist is more suited to answer more general questions about electronics design and PCB design. Both the message interface and the chat menu can also be used to communicate with other members of your team. So let's see how collaboration works in Flux. Collaboration is built into Flux, so sharing your design with other team members or contractors is as easy as sharing the project link. You can control who can access the project link by using the share menu here. You have full access over who can open that link. You can either type specific individuals or users, or you can give access to your project to the community at large. When any member of the project generates a change, a new version is automatically saved, and you can easily access the version history to revert to previous iterations if needed. We're almost done with all the interface in the schematic editor. We're only missing the object tree, which essentially is a list of all the components you have in your design, and the inspector menu here on the right. It shows contextual information about any component selected, or if nothing is selected, it displays global information about the project. The layout editor interface is very similar to the schematic editor, but you might have noticed there is an additional rules menu here on the left. This is where some of the key differences between ECDA and Flux come into play. Every aspect of the layout in Flux is managed by rules, from component positions, path size or shape, or trace widths. There are two main ways of applying a rule to a target object, a trace, a component, a path, etc. The first one is selector-based rules, the ones that you can see here in this menu. In this case, a group of objects is selected based on a predefined condition, and the rule is applied to all of the selected objects. The other option is to use an object-specific rule, where a single object is selected and then manually apply the rule to that specific object. Let's see both options in action with an example. So let's say that we want to change the trace width. If we zoom in, we can select the trace and then use the toolbar here. In this case, we want to do 200 micrometers, for example. As you can see, an object-specific rule has been generated called trace width. Changing the width using the toolbar or changing the width using an object-specific rule is essentially the same thing. Now, we can also try to select the entire net 
and set the tray specific width. So let's just do that. I'm going to find the net. In this case, net 37. And then I'm going to add an object specific rule called trace width. And we're going to set that to 300 micrometers. As you can see, the entire net changed the width except for this specific net. What happened here is that since I've set a rule for this specific segment, Flux assumes that all the net except for this specific segment needs to be 300 micrometers. If I want this segment to also be the same width as the rest of the net, the only thing that I need to do is disable this rule. As you can see, now that segment also behaves exactly the same as the rest of the net. This same process can be followed to change path shapes, path sizes, and even the layout size or shape by selecting the layout and then doing the same thing with rules here. You can also change the stack up and then use whatever stack up that works better for you. As you can see, we have several JLC PCB stack ups that you can use as an example for your next project. That makes it much easier when you're switching from ECDA, where the integration with JLC PCB is pretty straightforward. Now at the beginning, we also mentioned that you can use the selector based rule to select multiple objects and change their properties. In this case, let's add a new rule. We're gonna open that and use the selector here to select any object that you want. We have other tutorials linked in the description if you wanna learn more about how to use selectors. But in this case, for example, we're gonna use trace. This selector matches every single trace that I have on my design, as you can see here. Now we can do the same thing. We're gonna add a trace width, and in this case, we're gonna put 500 micrometers. As you can see, many nets have changed the width, but others have not. This is exactly the same thing as we were mentioning before. Object-specific rules will always take precedence over selector-based rules. That's because object-specific rules are more specific than the general selector-based one. Now, if you want to be sure that we change the behavior of every single trace, regardless of if they have an object-specific rule or not, we can use the important flag. This flag essentially is telling flags that we don't care if any net or trace in this case has a different rule, we want all traces to use this one that we have here. Finally, you might have noticed that there are a few vias here that doesn't seem to have been placed manually. What's happening is that Flux takes care of creating copper fields connected to ground and also do via stitching to connect all those different planes together. To see the planes, you need to click on the layer menu and then click on this drop like icon. As you can see, the plane is now enabled. There are ways to disable planes or change layers or use them in only specific layers. We also left a tutorial on copper fields and copper planes down in the description below. So that's everything you need to know about switching from ECDA to Flux, whether it's using AI to optimize your design, leveraging seamless collaboration tools, or simplifying part management, Flux offers a truly modern approach to PCB design. So create an account and experience firsthand how Flux can speed up your workflows. And remember, if you ever need help, Flux community is always there to support you. Happy designing, and I'll see you in the next video.